Hi folks, welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to go over how I mounted my Fish Finder, a Garmin Striker 4, in my Perception 10.0 kayak. Um, it's not a fishing kayak, but surprisingly enough, it has a space to put a transducer in. Unfortunately, the hardware that comes with the Garmin will not allow it to fit in there. I've come up with what I think is a creative, simple solution to help you mount that transducer in the, in the unit and get it to fit. Okay, so if you like the video, obviously, please hit the like button, share it on Facebook, all those other silly things, and please subscribe. Uh, in order for me to ever monetize my channel, again, used to be, thanks YouTube for changing all that, um, I need to get to 1,000 subscribers, so that would be my, my first goal. So please subscribe if you can, even if you ignore my channel <laughs> moving forward, that's okay. I need the subscribers, so please subscribe uh, and enjoy the video. Okay, in this step, I'm gonna talk about mounting the transom in the bottom of the kayak. So with the Perception Crank 10, there is a scupper hole that goes all the way down to a pocket underneath the kayak where the transducer is supposed to mount. Um, you can obviously mount this on the outside of the kayak or anything else, but there, there is a spot there where they intend to have the transducer mounted. Well, the Striker 4 from Garmin comes with this unit and some additional mounting hardware, and there is no way that I could find uh, with any of that existing hardware where you could actually get this to fit inside that opening on the bottom of the kayak. It just stuck out below the bottom of the hull, which means that whenever you're loading the, the kayak in your truck or pulling it up on the beach, it's going to hit the transducer. So, you know, one of the more expensive pieces on your kayak is getting hammered by the ground constantly. So... I uh, basically had to throw away all of the hardware that was in there. Um, now, I used a piece of aluminum and made a special bracket and everything for mine, but I don't think that that's necessary, and I'm going to show you a, a reasonably easy, quick way to get this guy to fit in that space. So first thing is I'm going to use a piece of um, electrical conduit. Uh, you can get this at Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. Uh, this doesn't fit in the scupper hole that's uh, in the kayak perfectly. It's a little undersized, and I'll show you how you can shim that space out a little bit um, as, we, as we go along. The first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of any sharp edges on the, um, on the pipe. So I'm just going to go through and just trim off the sharp edges, and that's the, the wire is going to go up through there, so I want that to be relatively smooth and clean. And... Uh, Hey, love it when tape gets stuck to your fingers. It's really fun. Get out of here. Okay, um, so we have the burr removed from the inside of the pipe. Now I'm going to heat this up a little bit and squish it down uh, so that it fits inside the in between these two guys right here. And then, um, because right now it doesn't quite fit in there. But I, ideally what I want is this to fit inside that so that I can just telescope this unit right up inside the kayak. Okay, well, I have this piece of wood here that is designed to fit in between there. It's approximate. So now we're gonna heat it up. All right, when you're heating it, you can tell when it gets warm because it starts to shine a little bit. All right, this is gonna, I'm just gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to watch the uh, paint dry, you know what I mean? I think we got it. All right, that's about, that should be about the right thickness now. Boom, magically, I have it cut to length and I deburred the inside. I didn't think you needed to watch me cut off a piece of PVC. Okay, so, uh, I should mention that this transducer was a faulty transducer. It came from the factory that way. It was broken. Uh, didn't work. Uh, one called a Garmin, and they sent me a new one. And uh, they even let me keep this one for demo purposes, I guess. Great, great customer service from Garmin. Really uh, have a lot of really good things to say about those folks. Okay, so um, now that I have this cut approximately to length, mount our cable through there and test it here and make sure our fit works. 
Okay, it looks like that's going to be pretty pretty good fit. All right, uh, now what I'm going to do is just mark it so we can drill a hole. Obviously, I'm going to pull that back out to drill it. I'm not going to drill through my wire. All right, so there we have our holes. That's our, our mounting holes. And um, you can, you can uh, sand this section here down a little bit to get it at the angle that you think is most appropriate. If you're one of those folks that likes to fiddle with the angle of your transducer, then this mounting system is probably not for you because once we get this mounted in there, um, it's not going to move around a whole lot. You're not going to have the ability to uh, adjust your angle. Um, it's essentially going to point straight down. Okay, there we are. Holes drilled. Amazing how that happens. And once again, I'm going to lace the cord, the wire back through here. And by the way, this cord is like 35 feet long from Garmin. It's a real pain in the neck. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm using a stainless steel uh, 1024 bolts. And I highly recommend that you use stainless, all stainless steel components. As I pull a zinc coated washer out of my drawer. Um, because this guy is going to be in the water quite a bit and wet a lot and you don't want it rusting on you. Okay, there we are. Now, our transducer is mounted to a piece of PVC pipe, and that's going to slide, and you can see this doesn't rotate at all after you put that in there. You can cut this off with a hacksaw if you're feeling so inclined. Um, it's going to fit in there just fine. I'm going to leave it on there because it's less chance that that bolt's going to work loose. And in fact, I might even put another nut on there just to make it that much more challenging for this unit to come apart. Lock washer would make sense or a lock uh, nut would also make sense. Um, I will likely just put a drop of super glue on there just to hold that, um, keep it from unthreading as well. So uh, there we are, good and solid on there. And the unit is gonna slip right up in the bottom of the kayak and, uh, and not stick down below the, the surface of the, of the unit. Okay, I mentioned that this pipe is not quite big enough to to fill out the uh, scupper hole that it needs to go through, which is the wire raceway for the uh, transducer in the bottom of the, of the kayak. So I just took a piece of a sprinkler hose or a sprinkler pipe. Um, I think this is the inch and a quarter and I cut a slot out of it. Um, then I will wrap that around the pipe. So when I stick it in there, it will compress um, around the, the pipe and that will fill out any gaps that are in that scupper hole so that it fits in there relatively tightly. Okay, this is how I actually mounted mine. Um, this is the demo unit we've been working on. And you can see here that the pipe comes up through and the spacer unit is tucked in there as well. And that fits quite, uh, uh, quite tightly. Uh, it's not so tight that it's difficult to get in there, but it keeps it from rattling around, which works great. Now I have this little metal thing in here because I actually am one of those guys that likes to mess with the angle of the transducer, but um, I found that I, after fiddling with it for a while, it was not, it's not worth doing. So uh, that's why I'm recommending that you mount it this way. So um, now to, to mount that in there, what you're gonna do is push it up through your scuffer hole here and uh, with your bushing in place, push it all the way up and then use a block of wood or something to hold it up so that it, it uh, is up all the way and stays up all the way. Um, now, what I also did was I included this box. Uh, it's a box that I got at, uh, I believe it was Staples uh, and it had a whole bunch of uh, plastic parts that protruded out here that were too, that made it too big to fit inside this area. So I used a belt sander and I sanded that down to, to get it to fit. Um, but I wanted you to see how that was all mounted in there. Okay, so the way that I mounted this guy in there is I took a piece of uh, PVC plastic and I used a hole saw, drilled that out. Then I got a piece of, uh, of uh, closed cell foam. It functions sort of as a spring. Um, and I put that down around the, the plastic. 
like that. And then this guy goes down there around that. And now um, I drilled a hole in my pipe that goes from this side to the other side. And I just compress that foam. Then I can run a bolt through there. Now the foam uh, decompresses and pushes back up and holds the whole unit in there so it doesn't come out. And it holds a box in there too. And you can see that we do in fact have 30 foot of cord that you have to somehow hide, hence the box. I also keep a few bits of spare hardware in there and the top. And that's how I mounted the transducer. So there you can see that the transducer is just a hair proud of the opening. And that's because I used an aluminum bracket on mine. Uh, the way that I showed you on the demo, it will be actually inside that, that, uh, that area. To give you a rough idea what I'm talking about here, if I can get in there and show you. There, you can see the aluminum bracket that I used. And that is taking up a bunch of space. So the thickness of that aluminum tab is actually making it stick down about a quarter of an inch further than the way that I showed you. So on the, the demo unit, the piece of plastic will be right flush against the, the, uh, the deck. But that's how mine's mounted. Talk about how I actually mounted the fish finder portion to the kayak. This is the Perception 10's Kayak's uh, pedal drive, and it has a vertical shaft in it. And it seemed to me that the most likely place to put, or logical place to put the fish finder is in between my legs here while I'm pedaling so that I can look at the fish finder while I'm navigating. So it seemed like a logical place to put it. So what I did is I just took two pieces of PVC plastic. I drilled a hole through the center. Uh, I drilled uh, a quarter inch hole from the uh, front section here to the back on both sides of that piece of plastic. Then I cut a, um, a cut perpendicular through it so that I, I would have four pieces and essentially made a clamp out of it. Uh, from there, I ran a quarter 20 bolt all the way through it, uh, bolted it down tight, and then that made this piece and this piece mounted solid to the shaft. From there, I took a piece of uh, aluminum extrusion. Once again, this is from a, a uh, gate arm on a piece of parking equipment. Uh, just what I happen to have laying around. You could use plastic or wood or, or any rigid substrate. Uh, from there, I drilled four holes in that and used a, a two inch lag screws that went into the plastic that holds this extrusion now to those uh, pieces of plastic here. This uh, round disc right here is the uh, off out of the box piece of equipment that comes with the Garmin. That's how you typically would mount it. Um, and that allows you to um, pull the Garmin off and, and store it if you need to. Uh, most of the time I just leave it on there, obviously. And pop that back in there. And that's how I, essentially how I mounted that. Uh, then the cables run back along the back side of the pedal drive, which allows you to pedal uh, without interfering with the, with the cabling. That goes directly into the box, which we saw in the previous step. That's how I mounted it. It works great. I can, I can uh, clearly see the, the fish finder while I'm fishing and while I'm pedaling. It's right in front of me. I can't miss it. I love it. It's... Uh, uh, a great system. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as mentioned before, please uh, like and share and subscribe. Thank you.